here from Math Math Engineering. Welcome back. We're doing a little bit of a different video for you today. If you haven't noticed, we got the live stream set up going on here. So um, the, the purpose of this video today is to show you how to utilize SAP 2000, which is a structural engineering software. Um, and we're going to utilize SAP 2000 to help us in our, our second year and our third year and even our fourth year, civil engineering, mechanical engineering, it could be anything, but our statics problems and uh, they're going to help us, you know, make sure that we get 100% on our homework problems. This is a really, really important tool, guys, that I wish I knew in, in second year civil engineering in university. I wish I knew how to do this because it would have made my the me checking my work so much easier. So uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and let's take a look at the screen here and see what we got. And um, just a note here, I'm using the evaluation version of SAP 2000. Uh, if you're a university student, I believe you can get an evaluation version for free. Uh, there's a couple limitations on it in terms of, you know, opening the pro the your programs that you save in, in the full version and you can't open them after a month, I think, of saving them, but it is a good learning tool. So, you know, go to CSI's website. I'll put it in the description down below and you can ask them if you're a university student. With that being said, let's take a look at this problem here. And the purpose of this video, what we're going to do is we're going to input this beam into SAP 2000. And we're going to, when we input the beam, we're going to, uh, you know, define its properties, its modulus, elasticity, its moment of inertia. We're going to put these restraints in. We're going to add the forces, and we're going to get these uh, these forces here, the reactions, and the bending moment and shear force diagrams. I'm going to show you how to do that, um, and then and we can do some other videos later. Comment down below, and guys, by the way, before we start, as always, if you're enjoying the content, you're enjoying our channel, please hit that subscribe button down below. Much appreciated. Thank you for that. All right, so let's get started. So we have SAP 2000 open. We're going to model this beam. So our first step is we're going to go to file, hit new model. Okay, so we're going to make a new model right now. And we're going to make sure that the units that we're using in our uh, in SAP are the same as the units in our problem, which they are. We have kilonewton and meter. Celsius, we don't have temperature in this. And we could model it as a beam, but I just want to show you how to do it as a grid because that's also kind of useful sometimes. Now we get the screen when we hit grid and we have quick grid lines, Cartesian... Uh, Cartesian plane here. And uh, when we're looking at the beam like this, for example, uh, how it's always put or how it's always shown to us in, in book problems in, in university, this is the x direction here in SAP. Okay, so this is the x direction here. This is the z direction up and down. And then into the page is the y direction. Okay, so um, let me just show you this. This is from the CSI website. And yeah, I can put a link to this in the description. But this is going to give you here some um, so the, the, some definitions of M2, M3. This is axis 3, this is axis 2, for example. This is axis 1, which is the x direction. So, you know, some, uh, some, some definitions there of the axes which are important uh, when you're dealing with SAP, uh, especially for the first time. So I'll put a link down there below. You guys can take a look at that. So what we're going to do is first we're going to define the number of grid lines that we want on our template here. And we're going to want the number of grid lines where we have we have an input or like a reaction or a force or something on our beam. So if we count from the fixed support, we have one, two, three, four, five kind of uh, either supports or forces. Okay, so we want five grid lines there. And the y and the z direction in this problem aren't relevant because like we don't have a frame, so our our forces are considered just in the extra like. Our beam is only in the x direction. It doesn't extend into the page or up. So uh, the number of grid lines is just one for y and z. That's fine. For the spacing, uh, in the x direction, you see we have a five meter spacing here. So five meters is good. And in the y direction, like I said, you can just put one or it doesn't even matter what you put because we only have one grid line. So um, yeah, press OK. And this is going to come up here. So you're going to have two screens. We have the 3D and the XY. And the XY, the 3D here, we don't need, so let's close that. And um, if you remember what I said before, see this plane where the beam is shown to us is X horizontally, vertically is Z. So we want the XZ plane, or XZ for the Americans. And now we're given this here. So now we're ready to start defining the properties of our beam. That's the next step. And uh, we're going to go to the define button. So we're going to go to the define. Let's define the materials of the beam first. So we're going to go to define, click materials, and we're going to go to add new material and just press OK. Oh, that's fine. And we're going to go ahead and modify that new material that we just made. So I'm going to rename it. Let's call it material one, for example. So this weight and mass is important here because in every pretty much every single statics problem that you do in strengths of materials or physics or um, until you start getting into the more complicated stuff in fourth year, 
there is no self weight of the beam. So they don't consider any weight of the beam in the problem. So that we're going to make zero for our material there. Okay, so for the modulus elasticity, um, if you're not sure how to put the units in, and you're from, so as you can see here, it's 70 GPA, right? So if we shift, double click on that box there, for the input, our SAP 2000 calculator comes up. This thing's really useful. So if you do know, for example, what 70 GPA is in MPA, for example, because I know that's a really common unit, right? I know that 70 GPA is 70,000 MPA. So I can go here, I can go Newton millimeters, because I know that's what the units of MPA are. And I could put in the unit that, you know, I know, okay, I could put 70,000 and then press OK. And what that's going to do is that's going to give me the units um, in the, uh, for example, the units that are, are prescribed that we that we assign to this uh, particular model here. So these units here. And uh, yeah, so that's, for example, 70 million PA. So that's good. Uh, and we're going to press OK here because that's pretty much everything that we need to assign here for our problem. Okay, so now we have our material assigned. Let's go to define again and go to section properties this time. So we're going to go to section properties and go to frame sections. So go over to frame sections, okay, and we're going to add a new property. And we're going to go to this drop down menu here. We're going to go to other and we're going to go to general because we want to create our own, uh, our own section with its own properties. And the only property that's actually given in this question, we're going to need to need the moment of inertia. And that's where this, uh, this document that I brought you comes up again is that uh, as you can see here we have moment of inertia about three axis and moment of inertia about two axis if you take a look at the bending here right um if you take if you consider for example if you take a look into the cross section of the beam here which would be looking like this the loads are being applied from the top here right so that means that the bending is about the, th the three axis okay so and if you take a look here m3 is the bending about the one two plane about the three axis so m3 about the three axis here is the one that we would like to uh, input for a moment of inertia. So uh, if you're unsure, you can probably just do it for both in the beam question, that's okay. Just put it in for both, it shouldn't really make a difference. Okay, so we'll do our shift double click and our SAP 2000 calculator comes up. As you can see, our moment of inertia in this question is um, 1,250 times 10 to the six millimeters to the fourth. So we have, uh, let's go to kilonewton, so we have millimeter unit there. So we have 1250E, okay, 06. And if we calculate that, that's the value, and we press OK, that's going to convert it automatically. So really useful stuff there. Uh, we don't need cross-sectional area. We don't need, there's no bending about the two axis. So we're just going to press OK. That's the only thing that we need to add there. If the question asks you to add other things, then you can do it. And uh, the last thing we need to do on our section properties is we're going to go to material, and we're going to select our material that we defined before. All right, so that's pretty cool. Uh, that's pretty much done. Let's go ahead and name this section, section one. And now we're done. So now we're actually ready to start drawing the beam. So as you can see, I mean, once you get quick at this, this is a really like a five, 10 minute uh, check for your homework problems and just to really double check and make sure that you did it right. So we're gonna go ahead and click here, um, this little button here, this little line is the draw frame cable button. Click on that. And we're going to make sure that the section one is selected, the section that we define. And we're going to start drawing and we're going to stop at each kind of node. So at each point at the beam uh, where we have a force or we have something that we want to assign at that point. So we're going to go here, boom, boom, boom. And then at the end, we're just going to right click. That's going to end the, uh, the drawing process. Let's go back to the arrow button. And now we're, let's go ahead and assign the restraints, so the supports. We're going to put in the fixed support here first. Let's go ahead and assign. We're going to go to joint and then restraints. Cool. And now we're going to click a fixed support, right? Because that is a fixed support here. Now, as you can see, our fixed support is assigned. If we hold down, if we click on node C for the rollers, let's put the rollers in now, and we hold shift and then click E, we can select C and E and put both rollers in at the same time. Back to restraints, and we're going to go to the roller here. That's it. Really simple. Let's put the forces in now. So those forces are at B and D. Now you can see why we assign these grid lines here, right? So we're going to go ahead and go to assign. And we are going to assign a joint load. And we're going to go to forces. And um, if you'll remember, this is the Z plane, right? That's the X and this is the Z. We're going to assign two forces in the Z direction of negative 120. 
and we're going to apply those. All right, perfect. So uh, we have our loadings, we have our force, uh, our supports defined, and now we're going to go ahead and we can analyze this beam. Now, before we do that, I want to show you one more little trick that you kind of always want to do. Um, go over to define and go to load patterns, and as you can see, we only have a dead load in this um, in this question, and uh, you know, and, and when you get to like steel design and that kind of stuff, advanced steel design, you're going to have different loading combinations according to whatever code that you're using or whatever code book uh, is in your country. But in this case, we use dead load. And for these book problems, remember the dead load is always zero. We did say that uh, we did assign our property to have a zero dead load, but just to be safe, um, we can always just go here and make the self weight multiplier of all sections zero. So if you just go to here at zero, and then we go modify load pattern, that is going to make sure that there's zero dead load included. Let's go ahead and press OK there. And now we're ready to analyze this beam. So let's click on Analyze, go to Run Analysis. And we're going to select Modal. We don't want to run a modal analysis. We just want to run the dead uh, linear static that uh, we have for the beam. And we're going to click Run Now. Let's save this as whatever, Section 1, OK? Save. And uh, now, as you can see, the section is now calculated. And everything is calculated about this section. So if we want to take a look at what just got calculated, we can go to Show Forces and Stresses. Okay, We can go to Joints, for example, take a look at the, the reactions. For A, Y, C, Y, and E, Y, they're all the same. As you can see, the rounding is a little bit different. Uh, but that's OK. And Let's take a look at the, for example, we can take a look at the bending moment diagram. So remember about the 3, 3 axis. And if we go ahead and click show values down here, we can take a look and see that 138.29. So uh, round, slight rounding errors here by, you know, 0 0.01 or something like that. You'll, you'll notice that'll happen sometimes. But pretty much everything is good here. If you want to take a look at a sp particular section, you can, um, you can right click on the section. And this comes up here. It'll show you the maximum, uh, the moment, the shear, for example. Um, one thing to note here is that the sign convention in SAP automatically is 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 flipped from probably your book. So they'll, they'll assign like a positive moment to be negative. If you just understand that that is the case, then you should be good. Uh, there is a way to reverse it, but um, if you're interested in that, I just post down below. I can make a video on that. And um, if we want to take a look at the shear, okay, we're going to go to frames. And we can go to the shear, for example, and take a look at the shear force diagram. And as you can see, uh, yeah, they've flipped the uh, the signs there, but that's okay. Okay, cool. Um, anything else to take a look at here? Um, we can take a look at the deflected shape, for example, of the beam. And uh, so the wire shadow there, that's the original beam, and then there's the deflected shape. So, you know, that's... Um, you, oh, we can also take a look at, uh, for example, deflection values at certain points in this beam, you know, right here, that kind of stuff. So there you go, guys. You know, that's how to use SAP 2000, really cool tool in order to help you out in your statics courses in civil engineering, mechanical engineering, aerospace, whatever it is, really powerful tool. Wish I knew it in second year university, but you know, that's why we're here. It's to show you guys the tricks that you need to succeed. So as always, guys, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. I'm Fred from the Engineering, and thanks for watching.